This is one of the most popular gaming laptops you can buy right now. In fact, it's even better now with the new 12th gen processor i7-12700H and RTX 3060 than the last year 11th gen Intel CPUs. Now, since the 12th gen, the CPU performance leap is just so big with DDR5 and everything that even the gaming laptops now, as a creator, you should be like kind of eyeing on some of the gaming laptops just because they work so good when using them as a creator. So in this video, we're going to be looking at the DaVinci Resolve performance, timeline performance, how well does it do in DaVinci Resolve. Let's go then. Looking for a cheap way to license your windows? Check out WhoKeys through the links in the video description. Make sure to use the code TN20 to get a 30% off. Paste the license to the activation settings and you're all done. This license is for Windows 10, but you can upgrade it to Windows 11 for free. They also offer Microsoft Office 19 license. Use the same code TN20 to get a 30% off. Check out WhoKeys.com in the video description below. I quickly want to mention that there is other videos about this laptop out there. If you're a Premiere Pro user, it's out there as well. And there are benchmark reviews. If you want to use it for 3D video, photo editing, go check them out. I'm going to leave the full playlist in the description below if you want to check it out, as well as how to upgrade this, because I have actually upgraded. They included 16 gigabytes of RAM that came with it to 64 gigabytes of RAM. And you might be saying uh, all of the specs say that you can't upgrade it past 32 gigabytes. Actually, you can. And I have done so. So a few things then how we're going to test this. As you can see, I've got the, this screen recorded or filmed actually because I don't want to record it on here. I don't want to have any performance cost just because I'm actually, you know, recording it on there. I don't want to have any performance issues there. So it's going to be full performance from there. The only thing I have added here is I'm actually recording the HDMI out from this uh, laptop, which I've got this, you know, recording on a separate uh, PC over there. As you can see, that's only 1080p screen. This included screen is about 2.5k and 165 hertz but this is only showing our desk manager and the hardware info of the cpu clock speeds and then gpu temperature cpu temperature so we can keep an eye on that and how this hardware performs when we're doing the test the cpu there is an i7 12700h and the gpu is rtx 3060 mobile version there i'm using davinci resolve studio 17 4.6 build 4 now you might be saying why are you not using the davinci resolve 18 at the time of making in this DaVinci Resolve 18 is still in the beta version and I just don't want to you know have any issues in there. The DaVinci Resolve 18 is really kind of optimized for the M1 more likely for Windows and you know 12th gen it should be roughly the same performance. You could get slightly better performance with the newer version of DaVinci Resolve but you're not going to you know benefit massively there and you're going to see a slightly better performance when you don't have the HDMI out or another screen connected and if you down hertz it or put the refresh straight down on the included um screen to 60 hertz you can see a little bit of a performance increase according to my testing what i've seen but i do think at the same time a lot of people do use it like at home on their desk when they come back home they've got charger and everything there they're going to plug it in there and then leave the laptop on the side while having other screens so this is the type of performance you would be getting so First of all, we're looking at 4K. So this is 4K, 30 frames per second, 422, 10-bit. And for our timeline resolution, we're using a 4K timeline, as you can see. And let's go. I also want to mention that I do have a little bit of a color grade and other effects on in here. As you can see, if we go on here, we've got curves, LUT1, LUT2, and noise reduction on here as well. Now, bear in mind, this might not be like your kind of way of color grading and other people say, oh, I'm going to put noise reduction first. First, I'm gonna put noise reduction afterwards. I'm gonna have less loads. I'm not gonna have noise reduction at all, but just to kind of add a little bit more to the color grading effect as well, so that we're not just, you know, playing back a normal footage because that would be kind of easy to have this there as well. But I understand that this noise reduction effect here is quite, quite costly on the performance of the hardware or especially on the GPU because even the M1 Ultra from a Mac, I'm not sure if you've seen that video, could not play this back when the noise reduction is actually applied there. So we're going to see how this RTX mobile GPU is going to do here. So as you can see, the color grade is on. It's a random color grade just to kind of make me see that I know that there's a color grade on, kind of even breaking the image a little bit. Let's press play. And yep, as you can see, our NVIDIA GPU here is struggling to play this back. As you can see, we're pulling 130 watts from the GPU 
which is absolutely ridiculous amount of power that we're trying to push through there and it's struggling to play this back now if we take the color grade off watch this timeline obviously is very very smooth this is 4k 30 frames per second 4 2 2 10 bit and this all gets played back on the CPU, video decode, nothing's happening over there. And as you can see, the dedicated GPU memory, DaVinci Resolve loves to use that. Already 4.6 gigabytes used here, and we haven't even done anything. It's just playing back normal footage. This is 4K 25 frames per second. 4 2, 2 10 bits. Still plays it back, no problem there, but with color grade, we're going to be struggling again. Let's have a look. Yeah, as you can see, if the color grade is on, the GPU just isn't quite strong enough to play that color grade back. And I'll bet you this much, if I'm going to go to the actual color grade here, and I'm going to skip this node, and we're going to go to here, and we're going to go this straight to there. We're going to take the noise reduction basically out of this clip, and we're going to go back here. Now we've got the color grade on, let's press play. As you can see, it plays it back, no problem. So the noise reduction, if you're gonna do a lot of it on the laptop, is gonna be a little bit of a, you know, downer type of thing, because you can't quite do it as much because it's very, very taxing on the GPU. But other than that, no problem. Can you see, I'm pressing play. It's still actually struggling a little bit playing this back here. It's not as instant. As you can see on the timeline, click, come, click, Click, come, click, come. It's not as instant as I would like. This is 4K SI422. Interested to see if that's gonna be played back because the codec is actually much less compressed. The timeline performance is okay. Let's see if we can play this back. Mm, still not really trying to catch up there, but still no. Just because the color grade is a little bit heavy on here. Now, I'm interested in what happens if we're going to put our timeline to 1080p. Just because when you're editing this on a laptop, most likely you're not going to be... Oh, look at that. Look at the timeline before it's now. It's completely fine. Let's press play now. Look at that. When the timeline is 1080p, it can play it back no problem with that color grade on as well. As you can see, if we go to... The color grid tab now we have the noise reduction node on there as well pressing black play look at that that's absolutely insane let's have a look if this plays back now yeah no problem so basically i'd recommend having a 1080p timeline when playing back these things and then you're going to be completely fine. Let's move on to 60 frames per second in DaVinci Resolve. And I'm going to go back to the 4K timeline for a second. Because on Premiere Pro, when we did the test, we actually test every single codec with the native timeline performance. So when it is 4K, we're playing it back on 4K. When it's, you know, 6K, we're playing it back 6K and so on. But in here, we're actually a little bit, you know, cheating in terms of the resolution. But here is our full resolution. Let's have a look at the time like 4 2, 2 60 frames per second, 10, 8, 8 bit. Can I be honest with you here? Premiere Pro actually played this back much, much better. And I bet you it's because if I went here, decode options, Nvidia, and Intel Quick Sync. Let me take Nvidia off. I'm going to save this. I'm going to start it again. We've got the settings here that the decode options, we're only going to be using Intel QuickSync from the CPU, uh, like the media engines inside the CPU, just because the iGPU in there on the CPU, the Intel XE graphics has two media engines apart from just one, which Nvidia has. So the actual iGPU, you know, media engine is much more powerful, supports more codecs than the NVENC uh, or N... N and deck as well codex because it's encoders and decoders on the nvidia gpu let's have a look if that's going to be any different here with the 60 frames per second now this here without the color grade this should be accelerated on the igpu look at that that's a much better performance difference can you see that 
That's insane. And look, we're actually playing it back on the iGPU and the performance is much, 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 much better. As you can see, if you, it's interesting that um, like DaVinci Resolve has done these updates because on the previous version, I think it was when it was 17.3 or 17.4 earlier versions, the switching between the like iGPU encoders and then the dedicated graphics card encoders and decoders was much better. But now DaVinci Resolve has got some issues with the latest versions where it doesn't know quite like which one to choose. Premiere Pro is much better. We'll use this one, that one, we switch, you know, it's, it's no problem. But if you're using DaVinci Resolve, I'd recommend unticking the NVIDIA decoders and just using the Intel you know, CPU ones because they're much better. Can you see how much better the timeline performance is? Yeah, this is 4K timeline, guys. And that's absolutely fantastic. As you can see, we're playing this back there. Plays back, no problem. Let's see if it plays back now with the color grade. Not quite, the noise reduction is still a little bit heavy on the laptop um, GPU. So this is 60 frames per second, 422. This is H.264, so this is CPU only codec. It's doable, it can do it, no problem. For a laptop, pretty impressive actually. Let's move on to H.265 timeline, okay? So this is high efficiency codecs. There's different frames and different kind of, uh, you know, codecs here. This is 50, 50 frames per second, 4 to 0, 10 bit. Timeline performance, extremely, extremely good, just because we can use the actual decoders on the Intel GPU. Pressing play, absolutely no problem, fantastic. So this is 24 frames per second, 10 bit, 4 to 0 same kind of codec as this one except this is 50 frames per second this is 24 frames per second no problem playing back this is h265 422 10 bit and this is usually a, a bit of a cracker and very hard to play back but we're playing this back absolutely no problem obviously with the color grade we're struggling here again i'm gonna go and try to take the noise reduction node off here and then Honestly, I wish we had adjustment layers here on DaVinci Resolve. Anyone know if you can get adjustment layers on DaVinci Resolve so I can just put it over and unsee it or see it? So I don't have to do every clip separately and copy it over. It's just a little bit of a nightmare, to be honest. Yeah, as you can see, the noise reduction, without the noise reduction, the NVIDIA GPU is just kind of strolling over there, no problem. It's all right, but the noise reduction, that's what it can't do, really. Okay, let's press play in here. This is 422. 10-bit H.265 uh, Canon R5 codec, and this is 60 frames per second as well. Usually very, very hard codec to play back. And as you can see at the moment, no problem. Timeline performance, extremely, extremely smooth as well. And this is with a 4K timeline, okay? So if you put a 1080p timeline and still export 4K, your timeline performance will be even better, especially on a laptop if you're editing on the go. I would recommend going 1080p timeline. No reason really to go 4K super 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 smooth so if i zoom, zoom in look how smooth this is insane and that's because of the igpu encoders in there honestly amd when you're making the next gen C gpus and cpus please give us similar decoders and encoders because that's like a deal breaker for video editors why they should go with intel okay i'm super happy with that let's have a look at some of the raw codecs so this is canon c200 raw okay and this is usually quite a hard thing to play back so this is 4k 60 frames per second canon c200 raw okay and the timeline performance is absolutely insane to be honest premiere pro could not handle it as well as this davinci resolve here Interesting that raw codecs seem to be working a little bit better on DaVinci Resolve, for example, this Canon RAW, but then the mirrorless camera codecs, H.264 and H.265 were working a little bit better on Premiere Pro on this laptop. I'm gonna go press play. It's gonna play it back. Yeah, no problem. Look at that. It's actually able to do it. I'm quite surprised about that, actually. Let me, let me put the, the color grade on here as well, but I'm just gonna take the noise reduction node off. Look at that. It's playing it back with the color grade on and everything. 60, well, it's playing it back 24 frames per second. I wish like DaVinci showed us actually like, you know, 60 frames per second as well. So it will be able to play that back 60 frames per second. But at the same time, this is a good feature. You don't really need to see 
it's back played back in like 60 frames per second you need to see it like in the t final kind of resolution or final um frame rate unless you are exporting in 60 frames per second you know you editing hobbit or something like that then probably you want to see this but honestly th this is insane timeline performance i've got nothing nothing bad to say definitely definitely absolutely amazing let's move on to red 4k raw so red raw here okay let's take the color grade off without color grade butter 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 smooth playing it back no problem putting the color grade on nah nah, nah. can't quite do it yeah it's just the noise reduction so I'd recommend whenever you're doing noise reduction, try to add that node, like the very last thing to everything, just because just when you're editing, it's not like good to see that played back. Without the noise reduction, super, super smooth, no problem. Uh, let's move on to red 5K raw, okay? So this is a 4K timeline, but let's see if we're able to play this back without the color grade first. Dun, 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 dun. It's the same in Premiere Pro. Like once we hit 5K and RAW, can't quite play this back. As you can see, CPU is 96 degrees at the moment, 100% utilized, and it's down clocking itself there. Actually, it, let's have a look here. If I'm pressing play, 4 gigahertz on P cores, 96 degrees. 3.9 gigahertz yep that's really a nutcracker here to to play back so really if you stick to 4k that's that's where you should stop let's have a look at b-raw 6k though because b-raw is something that a lot of people probably use timeline performance is extremely good let's press play here can you play back 6k b-raw that's usually a very easy codec to play back no problem as you can see so if you do use B-RAW, you're going to be fine editing that. Just Red RAW doesn't quite work so well on DaVinci Resolve. I think actually Red RAW worked a little bit better on Premiere Pro. So this is 6K Red RAW. Don't even want to know what happens here. So if I press play, it's absolute slideshow. Can't play it back at all. Let's have a look at if, if it changes if we go to 1080p timeline. Okay, 1080p timeline. Can we play this back? play come on nope still a bit too hard to play back nope 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 it didn't nope nope so this is canon r5 8k and i'm gonna go back to the 4k timeline okay this is 8k footage and let's have a look timeline performance pretty pretty good look at that it's playing it back no problem I guess playing it back in 4K, it's kind of like a quarter of a resolution, um, not half the resolution, which Premiere Pro would do as well. So it's it's okay. If we move on to, for example, an 8K timeline, let's have a look at the timeline performance here now. That's interesting. 8K timeline worked much better on Premiere Pro on this. Absolutely nothing. <laughs> completely completely crashed okay let's have a look at red 8k raw here okay without the color grade let us have a look this is the 4k timeline let's press play mm, not quite handling it as well so i guess don't do 8k editing in there unless you go 1080p timeline let's have a look if we can do it then nope still no go B raw 12k here. Let's have a look at as again the GPU memory is really being used here up a lot. The timeline very very smooth. Let's see if we can play it back. Yeah, if you've got a 1080p timeline, you can even play back on edit B raw 12k footage. I mean, I mean, if you don't know what this is, each frame of this is 85 megapixels, right? About 80 megapixels, something like that. So if you're playing back. 24 frames per second there's 80 megapixel photos being played back 24 times every single second which is absolutely 
crazy. Let's let let's try this. If I'm gonna put the color grade on, let's take the noise reduction off. I want to know if it's able to play back this footage with the color grade, but without the noise reduction. It's playing back 80 megapixels per frame. No problem there with the color grade. That's insane. Whoa. Wait a second. I didn't take the node off this one though. This one still has noise reduction on. Let me put the noise reduction back here. So now... What was that? Previously it did play back this footage or this clip with the color grade on and with the no noise reduction, but it can't do it now. So let's have a look at some of the hardware situation over here, what was going on. In terms of the temperatures, we did hit 100 degrees. So if you're editing on this laptop, maybe put something underneath, try to get a little bit more fresh air underneath to actually, you know, cool the system down. Or if you've got it on a dock or, you know, kind of vertically on there, when editing like in your uh, stationary station at home, stationary station, you know, in your editing station at home, then probably best, you know, getting it better there to cool it down so it's not going to thermal throttle or pull all the frequencies down so you're not going to lose as much uh, performance. Uh, CPU pulled up to 118 watts, which is very, very good in terms of, you know, it can push that power because on a laptop, that's a good sign because if it isn't doing that, that means that the thermals aren't so good so the CPU is not actually pushing that much. The GPU pulled 151 watts and max temperature about 70 degrees, 77. GPU is completely fine. GPU is cooled down very, very good. So no problem over that. So the conclusion then, is this laptop good for DaVinci Resolve editing? I'd say, you know, kind of, you have to know what codecs you're editing. If you're doing mirrorless camera codecs, 4K, H.264, H.265, you're gonna have a great time. If you plan to do a lot of noise reduction, regardless of the frame rate and, you know, resolution, then probably not a good idea or you can't really handle it. This laptop can't handle it. The uh, GPU isn't quite powerful enough to handle it. So the recommendation here is to actually just do the noise reduction afterwards and the last thing so you're not going to lose any of the performance while color grading, you know, doing other editing on the laptop. But when moving on to the RAW codex, unless you're using B-RAW, I'd kind of recommend staying away from RAW. So that's Canon RAW and um, Red RAW. Actually, Canon RAW wasn't that bad. The Red RAW was just bad, but that's generally, you know, what happens with um, red codex and the winter resolve, they don't play nice together. But if you're asking me like generally overall, is this laptop good for editing? Yes, very much so. The amount you pay for this and the performance you're going to be getting is absolutely amazing. Especially if you edit in DaVinci Resolve, you don't have to upgrade the RAM to 64 gigabytes because DaVinci Resolve really likes more VRAM rather than RAM. So as you can see, the max like RAM we ever used was maybe a 20 something gigabyte, something like that. So 32 gigabytes will be fine as well. In Premiere Pro, if you're editing there, then 64 gigabytes is a bit better because it does pull like 40 50 gigabytes there depending which codex and what you know kind of projects you're opening or projects you're playing back so if you're looking for something that's incredibly good portable laptop that packs so much power to edit back stuff then this is absolutely amazing now i'm, I'm not sure if it kind of comes across how good this is but this is really like a 12600k desktop size and like a RTX 3060 kind of level of things in just a small laptop version and it's portable which is just insane and you're gonna get the screen and things like for this amount as well which is just crazy so I do highly recommend this laptop for video editing because never, never mind being the gaming laptop this is just very very good even for DaVinci Resolve if you do want to pick up this laptop I'm gonna leave it linked in the description below as well as the RAM I used to upgrade this and the video how to upgrade this this because it's very easy to upgrade the RAM and please don't make the mistake of configuring the RAM wrong when buying this laptop. You can upgrade it yourself. It's very, very simple. Check out the video on the channel. As always, likes and subs and I'll see you next time. I'll meet you in the comment section below as well. See you soon. Bye-bye.